Happy Monday to you and welcome again to the front porch. It's time once more for another episode of Monday Meditations. Now grab your Bibles, open to the book of James. Today we're going to be looking at James chapter 5 verses 7 through 11. And there's a theme that we're going to be looking at in this section of James and it's on patience. He's already talked about patience a little bit in the beginning of the book in James chapter 1, letting patience have its perfect work. And you know, we can be entire, we can be complete and have everything that we need if we will try to develop that attribute, that Christian grace, if you will, of patience. Patience can also be translated as endurance. We need to endure to make sure that we stay on course and stay the Stay the track that God has put before us, the path that God has put before us. It's going to be met with challenges, and he's going to illustrate that in this text as well. I heard a saying a long time ago, patience is a virtue. Get it where you can. Found seldom in a woman, never in a man. And we know that's not always true. As a matter of fact, the Bible speaks in this context of a man who had patience, something that can be developed. Satan wants us to think it's impossible, but it's, it's not. And so he starts out in verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth on the precious fruits of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rains. And so, when you're looking at this context, you go to go back and look at what we talked about in our last episode of the Monday Meditations, and how many people who are wealthy take advantage of those who are less fortunate. And he says in that context, you be patient, therefore, therefore going back to the previous context, therefore because of what those may do to you, you endure, you persevere, you don't give up, you be patient and look to the coming of the Lord. The coming of the Lord is going to come back again in verse 8, but looking at that idea, he says, be ye also patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. The coming of the Lord eh, it could have a reference to the second coming and the eternal judgment and final judgment, if you will, where we'll be divided on the right hand and on the left. Those who are faithful to God will hear, well done, good and faithful servants. Those who, who are not will hear, depart from me, I never knew you. They'll be cast into outer darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that is, of course, that final judgment, the second death. And so he's saying, in essence, God will take care of others. Other way of looking at this could be the second coming, could be the, or the coming of the Lord, rather, could be the idea of the Lord's judgment coming upon them. God knows how to take care of his people. He knows how to send his justice, if you will, his vengeance even. So it could be that of God's oppression on those who are oppressing his people, God's judgment on them. So we can't speed up the process is what he's saying in essence and he uses the illustration behold take note of the husbandman the farmer who waits for his precious fruit and he can't go out there and put a seed in the ground and immediately have a harvest there's a process the early and the latter rain at different times of the year when the rains would come in that culture it needed really both of them to make sure that the rain was going to to help that product that he's put in the ground to grow, to have a harvest in the end, to have the food that he needs. The, he has a long process involved in that. And it takes time and it takes patience. Oh, he's working all throughout the year while we're waiting on those crops to grow. Other things are taking place, other things he's doing, but he can't speed up the growth, growth process. So he says, be ye also, as a result of that, just like that husbandman, be ye also patient. Establish your heart. Have your heart fixed, your focus. Your heart is focused on things that are above, not on things of the earth. Your heart's focused on the things that matter. Your heart's focused on the fact that God has promised to take care of us. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Near closeness that God has with his people. We draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to us. We resist the devil, he'll flee from us. Kind of reminds me also of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 
here in this life. And then David would go on to say, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a closeness God has as the shepherd to his sheep and how David realized that. Now, not all throughout his life, he made mistakes and he, he turned his back on God at times. And sometimes we find ourselves in those moments. But if we'll repent, as did David, he'll restore that relationship. He's always ready and willing to forgive us and to restore us back to the fold. And so he goes on then in verse 9 and says, Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Don't hold these grudges. Don't, don't hold this ill will, this grumbling and complaining about one another, especially within the body of Christ. Don't do that one against another. You're supposed to be brethren, he says. And if you do so, again, lest ye be condemned. Why do we say that? Behold, the judge stands before the door. The judge is there ready. Kind of reminds us of the things that the, the Lord was saying through the prophet Isaiah. If you'll go back to Isaiah chapter 63. Isaiah 63 verse 4 says, For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And so God is, a, is better at, at dealing out vengeance than we ever could be. And he knows the truth. He knows for sure who needs what kind of correction, what kind of, of encouragement, what kind of, of protection even. And he gives us his word, and we can study that word, and we can see what we need in this life. And so don't grudge one another. Don't grumble and complain about one another. Know that God is, is there to take care of the situation. He's the judge, not we ourselves. Judge not that you be not judged. With what judgment you judge others, you're going to receive yourself. Matthew 7, verses 1 and 2. Then he says, consider the beam that's in your own eye before you start trying to take the speck out of your brother's eye. God's a better judge than we are. Now, judge righteous judgment, absolutely. Make sure you're you're doing what is right and you're helping your brother who has that speck in his eye. But you can't do so if you don't get the beam out of your own eye first, is what Jesus was saying. He wants us to help one another. Brethren, if any of you be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Galatians 6, 1 and 2. Bearing one another's burdens fulfills the law of Christ. Galatians 6, 2 said. And as we have opportunity, Galatians 6, verse 10, we're to do good to all, especially those who are of the household of faith. And so then he says, for example, verse 10, take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Look at the examples we have in the scripture of those prophets. And just to, just to name a couple, what about Ezekiel? Ezekiel was told that he was going to go preach to a hard-headed people. But God said to Ezekiel, I'll make your head harder and you stay the course. Jeremiah, of course, uh, he was going to be thrown into a pit, he would say, with his preaching. And people would not listen. He was the weeping prophet, thus the lamentations that he wrote. It was a hard time for him. It got him so down at one point he decided he would, I would I'll quit preaching, but he couldn't do that. His, God's word was like a fire shut up in his bones, and he was weary with forbearing, and he couldn't stay. He had to preach the word. Or Isaiah. Isaiah the prophet, a powerful book. He realized that Isaiah was cut in half for his faith. Just look at Hebrews chapter 11 in the Hall of Fame of Faith and the people who, who had difficulties and trials, but how they stayed firm and they stayed convicted. And God says of them through the book of Hebrews, the world was not worthy of them. And then he gives a specific example. Their suffering, their affliction, their endurance, their patience. Take those brethren, consider those brethren the prophets. But then look at verse 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Take, for example, a specific one, he says, Job. Job was known for many things. He was known for his wealth. Job was known for his, his position among the people, leader. But Job is known today for his endurance and patience. How he never charged God foolishly. 
He didn't understand why the things were happening to him and he even thought that God was doing these things to him. But he would say in chapter 1, it's recorded in verses 20 and following how he would talk to his wife and say that we receive good things from the Lord. Should we receive bad things from the Lord as well? God's in charge. And he never charged him foolishly. He endured to the end. God took care of him. You consider him. You take example of what take the example of what Job has done and apply that to your life. We count them happy, which endure. That reminds me of James 1, verse 12. When we endure temptation and we're tried, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. When he's tried, he will receive a crown of life. Blessed carries that idea of happy as well. We count them happy. We count them blessed, those who endure. And there's that word patience in its different form, endurance, staying steadfast. You've heard about, you've studied about the patience of Job. You've seen the end, how God took care of him and blessed him with far more than he had to begin with. God is not cruel and harsh to Job when he's allowing these things to take place. It's, it's for the betterment of Job. It's for the betterment of mankind. God sees a bigger picture than we see. He even was showing the angels how this creation that is a lesser being in a lot of ways there in heaven with him, we have something that they don't. We have a second law of pardon. We have a Savior that came and died for us to give us a chance to, to show what we can do. Fearing God and keeping his commandments. That's the whole of man. It sometimes seems like a daunting task. That's why we need patience. That's why we need endurance. But he says, you've seen the end. There's an example of why we should never give up. Never give up. Don't ever give up. In the end, the Lord, the King James Version says, is very pitiful. Uh, it's the way we use the word today is not really fitting and it's so often we don't use the word the right way pitiful means full of pity that's what the word in essence means we use it as a as looking down on something we don't look down upon God God has tender mercies and full of compassion toward his creation toward man and he's full of that compassion and of those tender mercies that he's willing to bestow upon us you can't look at the cross you can't think about Jesus and not understand that reality. If you truly grasp what the, the word, the logos, the son came to this earth to do and to be, then you'll understand that he is full of mercy, tender mercy. He's full of compassion and he's ready to save us. He endured a lot. He was very patient and we can do the same thing as well. Humbling ourselves in the sight of the Lord, letting him lift us up being patient through the trials and the difficulties, knowing that, that the scripture teaches us there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. We'll not allow you to be tried or tested above that you're able, but will with those trials, will with those temptations, make a way of escape that we may be able to bear, endure, have patience. And that's something on which we can meditate this Monday and every day. May God bless you till we meet again. Mm -hmm.